Hey everyone, welcome to First Fill. Uh, we just cut to, uh, I'm testing out a camera over here, which is my little close-up cam um, for you. So uh, that's what just happened there. Hey everyone, hope everyone's doing good. It's so good to actually um, drink whiskey, join a live stream. I mean, even though it's my stream. But yeah, great. Great to have um, all of you who have joined the stream. Thanks to all you guys on, you know, probably the majority of you on the other side of the world. You're having water and you're having coffee and that sort of thing. And Probably, if anyone in the US are watching, uh, let me know in the comments. I'm sure it's probably late uh, for you there. Uh, yeah, so today is really exciting. Um, as you know on my channel, I've talked a lot about the Online Scotch Whiskey Awards. It's a really exciting thing where the community comes together um, and a lot of YouTubers, online bloggers, um, all sorts of people in the social space where we come together and we, we work out what's what's our favorite whiskies and then the community then votes on those whiskies so it's a really exciting um, event that's coming up and that is the and the the brains behind all that is Roy and Ralphie and so tonight we will have Roy on the stream I'm sure many of you know them probably the majority of you know who Roy is um, he's uh, another youtuber and he runs live streams and incredibly influential in the social space, incredibly uh, influential within both kind of uh, whiskey enthusiasts, but even people in the whiskey industry. Um, a lot of people even here in New Zealand, I know, talk a lot about Roy. So we're really excited to have him uh, come in later on. And I just got a few housekeeping things again. So uh, I'm still testing the technology on this. I'm using uh, Streamlabs, which is kind of a, it's a kind of more tricky program to use, but uh yeah, it's um, but it seems to work. I can see Barris. Thanks for yeah, you became a first world friend. Thank you so much for joining us here. Um, I'm testing out a few things. Where uh, I'm just gonna check. There's no comments that my audio is not working or any of that thing. Cause who knows? Looks like we're good. Cool. Um, so I think I've, I've got a few things set up. So if anyone does a super chat, if you guys want to get hold of us, um, ask a question to us, uh, you can do that and the question will come up on screen. Otherwise, just at me so it pops up in a little orange so I can see where the, um, I can see your message easy um, with all the comments. So in saying all that, uh, I am going to say hello to some of you guys in the chat. So who have we got here? Uh, we have got... Dave Swift here from New Zealand. Great to have you in. Uh, Dave Swift is fantastic. He's been um, also promoting the stream. He's been a real um, ambassador for both uh, Roy and I. He's been very generous. And um, he's been, he sent me some nice little drams. We've done some sample swaps and stuff. So actually, I need to do the other side of that. I need to give you some whiskeys there, Dave. Uh, hello, Tater. Hello, Carlos. Hello, Barris. Thanks for coming, FB friend. You can see the little whale there. Um, that's uh, Peter the Whale. Um, if any of you guys in the Discord who have joined the Discord, you'll know who Peter is now. He's a little AI bot. You can talk to him. You can add him. Um, anyone in the stream chat up here, uh, if you add Peter, you can actually talk to him right now. I'll actually, how about I just show you? What should we ask him? What you drinking tonight, Peter? Here we go. Check this out. Check this out, everyone. So Peter's going to write us a comment. Here he is. So Peter the Whale, he's uh, the guy in the logo, and he says, ahoy there, he's having a Lagavulin 16. That seems to be his favourite uh, whiskey. He talks about it a lot. And um, reminiscent of a bonfire on a stormy night and taking the plunge in the depths of the oceans with every sip. I, Lagavulin 16, is a true treasure of the whiskey world. What about you, Mimati? What will be your choice of liberation this fine evening? So yeah, um, lots of fun. We're having lots of fun on Discord um, at the moment, um, chatting to people. Uh, Peter the Whale is fantastic. If, look, if I'm not there, because that's the thing, a lot of you have questions, beginner questions about whiskey. You can ask Peter. You can ask him directly, and he'll answer your questions. So um, a lot of people love him. And uh, great, and Drummond's uh, Peter and his Lagerville. He loves his Lagerville. So yeah, now... Uh, there's no sponsor today, but um, 
today we well uh the sponsor is just hit the subscribe button that'd be fantastic if you're not subscribed apparently 60 percent of people watch my channel are not subscribed and there's a few uh really interesting things we want to talk to today um with roy so the main thing will be about the whiskey awards but there is a really interesting thing happening uh in new zealand at the moment uh cadrona distillery which is one of the big new zealand distilleries was bought by uh interbev uh you guys in scotland will know inverhouse um so that's basically the owners of spayburn who have bought cadrona um so I thought, well, that's a great dram to have right now, um, especially since this is uh, one of Roy's favorites too, the Spayburn 15. So I'm going to pull that. And I'm going to say a quick hello to a few of you in the comments again, and then we'll jump over to Roy in just a minute. Um, hello, where are we? Hey, Pete here, good to have you in. Hey, Nick Keane. Uh, oh, I just need to say uh, good morning to you, Pete Head. He always says... Uh, good uh, good morning to me when I go on the other streams because where we are on the planet. But good morning to you, Pete Head. And hey, Peter, great to have you in. Uh, another Kiwi. Awesome to be uh, someone in on our time. What are you drinking, Peter? Are you having anything tonight? Now that you can actually have a dram during the live stream. Um, hey, James. Got your large coffee. Nice. And hey, Tim. Good to have you in. And Jow, 8.30 and starting work. Nice. Can you still listen along in the background? Amy's in. She's in. Uh, fantastic, Amy. She's great. She's uh, number one on Discord still um, in the Levels chat, if you ever uh, see that. And great to have you in, Amy. Hey, Carlos. Hey, James. And hey, Marcus. Hey, Tata. Yeah. Anyone else having a dram? Hey, Anthony. Uh, hey Alistair, great to have you in. Hey Ben, good evening. Oh, there's there's lots of people in now. Kiwi Kiwi goes in. Great to have you in. Oh, the chat has jumped. I can see how that happens now. Great. So, in saying all that, um, this is not going to be a really long live stream. I'm, I think it might just be an hour, an hour and a half. It is. Um, you guys probably watched Roy's live stream uh, last night. He went. He did go quite late. As um, and so I don't want to go too long um so yeah grab your favorite dram um sit back or your coffee or your water and we'll head over to roy now if give me a thumbs up if you're ready if you can see me great all right here we go Let's see if i can work this technology here we go hey roy how are you good morning Good evening, <laughs> whatever it may be. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm very well. I'm very well, Phil. How are you? Yeah, great. It, it is quite weird. It feels like the reverse now. It's normally me jumping in. And, um, uh, you've had me on a few little live streams there, here and there, which has been fantastic. And uh, it's normally me and my coffee, uh, but I think the tables are turned now. Well, I think you were open to going live anytime. And I, and I think it was in my mind immediately that I owe you one or two, right? So... Yeah, it's a pleasure for me to to join you whatever time of day it is, buddy. It's great to be here. Thanks oh, for the yeah. invitation. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's, it's great to have you in. Um, yeah, I've been, um, for those who don't know, uh, yeah, Roy runs these, ex he calls them the V, actually, Roy, can you tell people what is what is a VPUB? What does it even mean? <laughs> I know, um, it just became known as that thing. So uh, I, I was doing a, a twice monthly live stream since 2017. And what it became about was less about, you know, the whiskies and the content and things like that. It suddenly became a hub, a place to meet. It was a community hub, right? And and it started to build this kind of atmosphere of almost like a, a bit of a whiskey bar, a pub. So the V-pub thing came naturally just as, as almost like a virtual pub. But of course, the V is a small V because there's nothing virtual about it. Uh, we might be using digital technology and things to get together but these are real real people mm. sitting in front of real drums in all corners of the world and it just started to build of course it's tricky to, because of time zones right as we've mm. exper been experiencing right now but but because of the live session it is then obviously recorded on youtube mm. for posterity so anybody can join in at a time that suits them and kind of watch the live chat and just kind of read and listen along 
So that's what the VPUB is after through, throughout COVID. Um, it changed from twice monthly to twice weekly. <laughs> And now yeah. post COVID, it's settled down into a weekly pattern. So every Thursday night, we've got this really kind of sacrosanct pocket of time where we just kind of lock the door, <laughs> yeah, try and get everything quiet, get the mood right, and just kind of relax and take a wee bit of time away. The downside of it, as you've quite rightly pointed out, is that you have to listen often to me monologuing. But sometimes I get interesting guests like yourself on Phil, and we can have a bit of fun too. But in a nutshell. Eh, yeah, and a, a caveat as well. You've suggested this is going to be a short live stream. Anybody that knows me, <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty unlikely, buddy, but I'll do the best hey, I can, okay? If, if you're up for it, I'm up for it too. This is a, this is a live stream yeah. where I can have dreams, so. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, I do have one here for the mood. Um, uh, yes. I've got one here that I can roll around and smell. I can take a wee sip from it. Uh, but a few hours later in the afternoon, I'm going to have to drive. And, uh, you know, we just, in Scotland, it's really, really... You just don't. You just don't do it. Mm. Um, but I've also got my coffee and my water on the go as well. Uh, am I on screen? I need to pull up the YouTube window to see. Uh, yeah, you're on yeah, screen. Okay, I'm quite cropped, so I might be able to slink off to the site. You can. You <laughs> can we slink set off. the coffee off, yeah. off stream and come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, yeah. but it's brilliant to see so many people in and loads and loads of familiar faces. Wonderful stuff, Phil. This is a pleasure for me, buddy. It's it's so fantastic, and that's the amazing part about of it is it's not just about you and me. It's about this amazing community that no matter where we are, we can get together, we can talk about whiskey, we can share whiskey, we can enjoy whiskey, and um, and it's it's just that's that's what's so special about it. Like it, the comments people um send to me about who they meet, or I can see Barris Barris uh, just here has written um the two flag bearers that entice me to become a geek. <laughs> Good work, Barris good job <laughs> fantastic um yeah and and that's what i always find as well like um some people might think uh you know we've we've both got youtube channels are we in competition and the answer is no because we um i will never be i'll never be doing v pubs like you and you probably won't be doing the strange things i do down here so um and the collaboration side is just one of the best parts about it. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think whiskey is a brilliant thing for, you know, it's, we talk about it being a glue for community and all the rest of it. But, you know, when we when you imagine that there's all these YouTube channels competing for airtime, competing for subscribers, viewers, watchers, likes, all of these things. Mm. So we, we do compete in that sense. But we don't behave in a way that's competitive. We're, we're very kind of uh, mutually supportive of each other. We realize that uh, Roy can never be Phil, Phil can never be Roy, all of these things. And we will attract a different audience, no, no question. But being supportive of each other actually raises the value proposition for the community. Yeah. Um, if there's no infighting, but support, a uh, celebration of each other's content, we kind of raise the bar for everyone, I think. Um, and whiskey's good at that, whiskey's good I think the whiskey community is as welcoming as it is because of what whiskey is. Mm. If you want to be a geek in whiskey, you need to be pretty open-minded as a person. You need to be quite curious. Yeah. You need to be the type of person that wants to discover and listen. Um, and I think that that's the community that we seem to have is very welcoming, very open-minded, very curious. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whiskey's kind of taken care of that for us sometimes. I know that seems a wee bit whimsical, but it's the way I like to think. Yeah, and often I find whiskey is kind of the stage that can set, be the set for good conversations. Um, I remember when I lived in London, like some of the best conversations I had with a lot of close friends was around a dram. It yeah. wasn't around kind of our, our wheat bix um, in the morning. Like it was around yeah. late at night. We were sitting there. We were relaxed. Our guard was down. We were more open and we would, you know, it was always around a special dram. And every so often the dram wanted to enter the conversation. And that was, it was almost like another person. The dram goes, Hey, I'm here. What do you think? Of, what do you think about this? And then, some, you know, we we'll try, we'll try a dram and then it goes and we'll go, Whoa. And then it changes the conversation topic and we go in on exactly. the dram and then we go back into our topics. And that's one of the magical things about whiskey that other hobbies you know, don't have like, 
you know, there's other hobbies where they can be very solo, but there's something about the community bringing people together that is so special about whiskey. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with sitting on your own in an armchair in the evening and no. just contemplating anything that you need to contemplate over a dram. But it does it does encourage people to get together over the dram and or drams and, and kind of and kind of geek out a little bit and because whiskey is only created, Phil, you know, to remind us what it is to be alive. There's no sustenance or vitamins and all of these things. It's just mm. the only reason to drink it is for our primary senses to be triggered to be involved to be and and you know that just makes it perfect for what you describe mm. and just from from what you've said there fills me with encouragement because it means that i'm sitting here talking to a kindred spirit and that makes everything easy so it doesn't matter where we disagree yeah. we can get over that because of our kind of mutual respect love of whiskey and just that kind of open-minded uh, Mm. environment that whiskey helps us build yeah, yeah i love it phil it's been going for years now and it's just building and getting stronger thanks to really high-end content creators like you i have to say the content that you you're putting out in your channel very educational bias i get the sense phil that you're just you're kind of learning concepts and then working out what was difficult to understand about those concepts mm -hmm. and then if you pardon the pun distilling them into a much more easy to get your head around a package in your in your videos, right? Yeah. It's your your teaching from the perspective of experience. Yeah. Which is fundamental and important. Even if in the past or in the future or whatever, if you make wee errors or mistakes, nobody minds mm. because of the amount that they're learning from somebody who's clearly learned in that way. Um, yeah. It's fabulous content you're putting out. I cannot fathom the amount of effort that you put into some of those videos. Um, but they're gorgeous to watch. Uh, and it's not just about your handsome face. <laughs> it's about the pacing. <laughs> it's about um, the, the you know, the, the way. It, just Again, like you say, stuff that I will never be able to dedicate the time to do. And even if I did, I would never have the talent. So yeah. just amazing to have you as part of the scene, buddy. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's definitely part of it because part of my normal job, for those that don't know, um, I'm a video editor. So I do a lot of videos for like corporates and, you know, some things are like insurance companies and that's complicated. And then so you're doing a similar thing where you're taking a complicated thing like insurance and you're doing like a, a little video. Um, and so to bring that to the whiskey space, which is a complicated, like, which is actually what I love about it. I love that it's complicated, that you never have learnt whiskey. You never have like got to a stage where, oh, you've got it. You've, you've got the masters in whiskey knowledge and you're done, next thing. Like yeah. there's new distilleries, there's new things happening. There's, there's even new types of wood. Like there's just so many different things. And I think that part of it, and also as well, um, most whiskey drinkers are not going to be people who are, you know, in the industry or, you know, like, got PhDs and this or that. They're just going to be normal people like you and I who enjoy a dram and want to know a little bit more so they can enjoy it a little bit more. And so a lot of my videos are targeted at that. So when someone sees a sherry cask, they go, oh, sherry cask, oh. And someone looks in the bottle and they see the words PX and they always thought, what, what on earth is a PX? And then they go, yeah. oh, it's the sweet sherry. It's the real sweet yeah. one. And um. Yeah. Yeah, so that that was kind of my my objective, my goal of that, and um, no, I really appreciate that. It means a lot, especially coming from someone like you. No, you're welcome. Absolutely, I've just I'm just putting on. Uh, do not disturb. I've realised I've got a lot of messages coming in and stuff. Interestingly, okay. messages about the Oswiz, <laughs> but but that's it's a positive thing. But uh, yeah, it's muted now, so hopefully no notifications popping in. It's all good. Uh, so I've got a yeah. dram here. And uh, many of you will know this. This one is the Spayburn 15. And many will know, let's see. Okay, I'm going to do a test of technology here. Let's see if this works. Is this going to work? We can still see Roy. Here we go. Spayburn 15. So this um, was brought to attention by many people, by you, Roy. And um, it's a fantastic whiskey, 46%, non-shell non filter, natural color. Um, but the reason I'm sharing this whiskey tonight is not because it's uh, one that you've highlighted several times. It's because the owners of Spayburn 
And there's some big news that's happened in New Zealand very recently. The owners of Spayburn and the owners of another one we've talked to quite a lot, both on your channel and my channel, the Anok. Uh, this is the 18. Yes. Absolutely fantastic tram. So I'm going to pour a thing. Uh, the owners Inter Beaver International Beverage. Very Thai beverage, name. yeah. Inverhouse, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, in the, the Scottish region, I think it's called Inverhouse. Um, yeah. They've bought Cadrona Distillery. Um, yes. Some of you might not know uh, Cadrona that well. You probably know the other two. But this is Cadrona, and as I've always said in the channel, uh, I think it's in the most beautiful location um, out of any distillery in the world. It's opposite a ski field, um, and the liquid's really good too. So what I really want to hear from you, Roy, is what do you think that means for, uh, I guess, what's your what's your view on that? Like, what, what do you think, how do you think this might change what Cadrona's doing? What do you hope to see Cadrona do now? Have you tried a Cadrona before? Yeah, so uh, I'll caveat this before I speak about it. The news popped up this week, and I haven't had much time to dig into it. Uh, I know that uh, I know the news; it's, it broke a couple of days ago. Um, for me, there's a lot of it that just makes sense. Hmm. Um, there, there are some concerns for me, and I'll voice those concerns generally speaking. Right, and then this we'll is, talk. This is unfiltered. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll voice those concerns first, Correct. but then I'll focus more on the relationship that you've asked about, specifically Inverhouse. Yeah, uh, you know, the, under the parent company, and then how that parent company might manage Cordrona. Um, firstly, you, you know, we've got an explosion of global whiskey happening right now, and it's fantastic mm. to see. It's wonderful for the the drinkers. It's wonderful for the scene. The more variation, the better, especially when the majority of it. In fact, very, with very few exceptions, has been developed flavour first. And it's very small scale. New Zealand is part of that. Um, flavour first, quality, integrity, forward. These are distilleries that have come about at, through the hands of impassioned people. Cardrona especially, right? Uh, the team at Cardrona um, just doing fantastic things. So we've got a scenario here that Scotch whisky, which has been seen as the pinnacle for so long you know scotch irish scotch irish that kind of thing but throughout the kind of post-war hollywood period of kind of tumblers and ice and that it was scotch 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 and, and it became a drink that was ordered by the nation it was made in right scotch from scotland mm. um it's quite a quite a thing and it's often seen as the pinnacle however with world whiskey exploding like it is it's only a matter of time before mindsets change and I think that that's a problem for Scotch whiskey. And if we need any reassurance that other people, the people in boardrooms across the world, feel the same way, they are investing in global whiskey. Diageo is investing in China, as is Pernod Ricard. Um, Thai Beverage is investing in Cordrona in New Zealand because they realise that world whiskey, uh, or let's say, World whiskey. You always see world whiskey from the perspective of a Scotch drinker, and I'm here in Scotland looking at the Scotch whiskey community and things. So my kind of myopic view uh, is one from 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 planted in the Scotch Foundation. So when I say world whiskey, it's almost a wee bit dismissive, right? But let's say anything other than Scotch has has got a really bright future. So my only concern here is that will I hope that these companies don't decide to just back all the horses in the race and if one starts to become a little bit lame just dismiss it over time or whatever because whiskey is not a typical product we are guardians of whiskey temporary custodians of something that needs to be preserved and passed on to future generations and not just surviving but thriving and in very good health yeah. and often it's because of the business element it's mined within an inch of its life just to take out as much money as they can and quality be damned with a very short-term view. However, my experience of um, Thai beverage and Inverhouse is not that typically. Uh, yeah. Inverhouse, let's talk about the Scotch, uh, whis the whiskies first. Under Thai beverage, they've been, to my eye, looked after quite well. Mm. We've seen a lot of investment sometimes to the enthusiast ham-fisted rebranding and things like that but you know what after the 
after the water's passed under the bridge for a while, the dust settles a little bit and we realise that actually this is okay. Old Pulteney went through a rebrand, Balbear, Bal Blair also went through a rebrand under, under Inverhouse. We're waiting to see if Anok goes through a rebrand. I hope it doesn't because it's so elegant and pretty, right? Yeah. Um, Speyburn as well. I'll, I'll I'll suggest Speyburn could probably do with a little bit of a a rebrand, but mm. if they don't touch it, I'm quite happy. And that leaves Balmainic and Balmainic, uh, probably their biggest distillery, a lot of flexibility in that distillery there, uh, making gin from Balmainic too. Uh, that, uh, we don't see a product from them yet. However, at every distillery, we've seen investment, we've seen growth, and we've seen a pretty reasonable spread of products that can speak to mass market and speak to the enthusiast, which is a rare trick mm. and a difficult thing to pull off. Mm. Um, but they've been doing it, so they've got entry-level products from Old Pulteney, they've got entry-level products from Speyburn, but then as you go up the range, you start to see unchill filtered natural, you start to see things that are made by impassioned whiskey people. So you get the sense that Thai Beverage is used to that dynamic, that they're going to move into Cardrona, which is all about that, flavour forward. Uh, you know, I think that the problem with Cardrona is the price and the availability in, in various markets. But it's that price for a reason. There's n there's very little of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So maybe we'll get the opportunity to slowly, with a guiding hand, see more, uh, more spirit made, more investment there to to kind of try and scale things up a little bit, but preserve that kind of flavour forward integrity, mm. forward spirit. That's what I hope is a geek and an enthusiast. Yeah. To answer your question, if I've tried Cardrona, yes, but I've always tasted it and thought, you know, that's pretty good. And then you kind of you put on that horrible thing that everybody does. That's good for a young whiskey. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, it's just yeah. good whiskey. It's yeah. just good whiskey. The, the, the age is incidental, okay? Mm. It's just good whiskey. But then you work out that the price, and I think the single casks in the UK for a, this is for a half bottle, a 35 CL is over £100. Yeah. So it's easy to back off. It's not for me right now. Yeah. However, you'll see over my shoulder, and that's pure coincidence, it's not put there on, this is my world whiskey cabinet here, as you know. Yeah. That's a bottle of Cadrona, and I picked that up on uh, at Waitrose recently on discount. I got that for 60-something pounds. Oh, okay. Um, so quite a heavy discount. Uh, this is not the single cask. This is the Arvating, which is a five-year-old. I think they're growing wings. I don't know what you have there. Yep, that's exactly what I've got. I've got the growing wings uh, PX cask one. Ah, okay, so I've got a vatting. It's not PX cask. Do you want me to grab it? I'll grab, yeah, grab it. it. Just let you know what it is. So this is my one here. The um, It's aged in bourbon and PX casks. And so, yeah, um, for people who don't know, um, I did go to the distillery and they told me that these small bottles are a temporary thing. It's sort of like, uh, it's almost like that's the one. That's it. Is it the same? Uh, you've got the sherry cask one, which I must be just an Oloroso, I, I imagine, because my own uh, sherry and, nice. This is sherry and bourbon, yeah. uh, six, 64 point nine percent growing wings. Um, yeah. I have to say it's a small bottle, and I, I don't enjoy small bottles for all the obvious reasons. Okay, but yeah. this is a pretty thing, right? This is a yeah. pretty thing. Yeah. Um, I, it's not I, open. It's, I'm saving this for every now and again. I do a, anything but Scotch V Pub. Ah, uh, yeah, so cool. I've got, Great. I've got a a Union Brazil 15 year old over there. Uh, so I'm just starting to collect with a view to doing, uh, I'm probably almost there. There's an argument that it should be done pretty soon, but I'm really excited to open it and try it. Uh, yeah. How are you going with yours? Yeah, I really like it. So um, I've actually got the even more recent one. So um, yeah, for those who don't know, uh, uh, I did, uh, my, my two concerns were the bottle's too small and it's too pricey and why is everything coming out at cast strength? Um, rather than just being like one, you know, just like an, you know, one of the bottles. Why, why is everything come at cast strength? And uh, when I went to the distillery, they were saying, well, basically this is a way to just follow. It, it's a quite a unique way to do it, I guess. Um, this is a way to follow where we are. So it's kind of like updates. And so it's straight from the cast, as raw as from the distillery as you can get. So they, and the whole thing is around this kind of bird analogy. Um, I think when they first put the still into Cadrona, um, there was a New Zealand falcon, which is a native New Zealand falcon. And so the first 
um, release was called um, Just Hatched. The second one's called Growing Wings. That's one you've got. And the recent one I've got here is called um, Full Flight. Um, so this is, I think, the last in a series of whiskies uh, Cadrona are doing before they release their 700 ml um, whiskies. And I think those ones might be 46% 700 ml. So what I'm really hoping for, and I cross my fingers, especially with uh, Interbev coming into this, is they, you know, they do, uh, you know, a 700 ml good price, 46% whiskey that um, will be accessible for lots of people. And yeah, and what's uh, really interesting about it uh, is like what you're saying, my, I, I guess I have, I've got hopes and concerns too. My hopes, are, well, the interesting thing about World Whiskey is that it can be very siloed and especially something like Tasmanian whiskey. Tasmanian whiskey is really good, but the vast, vast majority is really hard to get. Especially even us in New Zealand, we struggle to get Tasmanian whiskey. But people in Australia love Tasmanian whiskey. And then you have people in South Africa and they've got their whiskies, but we're not trying them. So my hope is that uh, now with uh, the other big one is uh, Pocono. Pocono. Um, yep. And... Uh, they are straight into international distribution. Um, so I'd love to see New Zealand whiskey doing what New Zealand wine is doing right now. Um, New Zealand wine in the 70s was just a tiny little, like, it, it wasn't really anything. But now you walk into any Tesco's, any Waitrose in the UK, and you'll see New Zealand yep. Pinot Noir, and you'll see New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. And I'm, I'm, yep. hoping, I'm hoping when we do go to our bottle stores... Um, it will be more diverse. I, I, it would be very exciting if we can go to a bottle store and, and there's the scotch, fantastic, and there's a big section for scotch, just like we have our French wine, our Italian wines, and then we'll also one day be able to try whiskies all around the world. But I think the big problem these days is distribution, so it totally makes sense why Cadrona have taken this step. And, um, yeah, I'm really excited for it. So, it's, yeah, great to hear your thoughts. Yeah, on I that. mean, they've been doing... But when there's such small quantities, there's an argument that they put it in small bottles and distribute it as widely as they can, get it uh, more liquid on lips. That's obviously the strategy there. But there's also, I mean, I imagine that they really don't have a spirit vat, <laughs> right? It's, when when you see how bottlings are put together, you know, it's uh, you know, maybe they do have a, a, a vat for such things. I don't know. Uh, maybe they don't have a bottling line on hand. I don't know how they do their bottling or whatever. Maybe they're forced to do it in this way just because of the resources they, they have at hand today and they need f investment in order to carry that forward to do mm. better and bigger things. Uh, so maybe that's kind of one of the positives that might come out of this, that we might see an ability to do uh, slightly larger scale thinking. I understand what they've been doing with the just hatched and growing wings and full flight and all of these. And it makes sense and it's nice to have that story and it's nice to follow the progress. Yeah. But what what's what would really what would really be nice is is a, a, a decent scale release at some point in the future so that we can mm. all taste that a wee bit more. But be careful what you wish for. Yeah. Because if you grow too fast, if you grow yeah. too quickly, if you kind of force things and stuff, it's, things can get lost. If famously, you know, you look at Springbank, every yeah. single change that they make to their process is agonized and agonized and agonized over because they they, yeah. they just the priority for them is the long term view to preserve what the distillery and the whiskey yeah. is. Yeah. That said, on the whole, it it just makes sense to me, this this purchase. Yeah. Uh, it just makes sense. And and I guess that's another worry as well. Like I I'm hoping it doesn't go like I I've tried a little sample of Bimba, but now I can't get it. Like it's it's become quite hard to get now and I hope it doesn't just become an expensive like try this you know and then then you never really can afford it later i'm hoping it doesn't go that direction um yeah. bimba's great whiskey but they look they got it's a little distillery there's only so much they can do and now there's investors involved and um collectors and things so um yeah yeah you can still you can still pick up bimba um and a lot of the expressions uh, don't really go for that you know it's not everything that they release is of interest to collectors right some of them is a little larger scale yeah, you bring over a little bag full of Cardrona in New Zealand whiskey, and I'll send you home with a little bag of Bimber. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> there you go. I am desperate to come over to Scotland again. I, I'll, I'll have a large, a lot of things to share, a lot of dreams to share with you. We'd yeah. have a lot of fun, Phil. We'd have a lot of fun. That's for do, sure. 
just while we're still quickly on this New Zealand topic before we jump over to the Online Scotch Whiskey Awards, um, have you tried yep. any other New Zealand whiskies? Um, uh, just curious, have you had a Waiheke whiskey yeah, or a Yeah, what Thompson is it? Or? Uh, was it Waikiki? What are they called? Waiheke? Uh, the, yes, Waiheke? Yeah, is Waiheke. Waiheke, okay. Yeah. Thank you for the pronunciation there. That's one I owe you. That's um, all good, all good. I get sent, I get sent yeah. a sample pack from them. Um and it's you know it's just not something I normally do. Yeah. Uh, it's the type of thing. And again, if I see it, if it's available for retail in the UK, if I can buy it, if I can go into my local store or find it online, mm. then it's worth me buying and talking about. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and I have to say, I was I was pleasantly surprised. I was curious. Again, I don't want to caveat for young spirit. I mean, these these are these are still young whiskies. Yeah. Um, but again, it's clearly pe from impassioned people trying to put flavor forward integrity yeah. quality experience forward um so yeah i'm interested and pocano was the other one you mentioned right yeah so they're the biggest pocano. distillery and um uh, what's his name mark he used to be from he came from he worked at glen Morangy and tully barden so he's he's an english guy and he's come over and he's moved his whole family to new zealand and but they're doing things on a proper big... I mean, it's probably not big scale when you think of Glenlivet and Glenfiddich and that sort of thing, but in terms of New Zealand whiskey, like, it's not a craft distillery. It's a big... It's a proper middle-sized distillery. Interesting. So I've yet to try that one. Yeah. Um, so that's what, probably what, what, the what, one most likely... Uh, I'm not sure what the distribution's like now, but most likely everyone listening to this, that's probably the one you'll have access to first, I think, yeah. in the bottle stores. I know it's in Germany at the moment, um i'm not sure where it is around where else it is um i'll have to catch up with them um yeah well um yeah i think it was interesting to see when you talk about distribution it was interesting to see cardrona participating in the last year's glasgow whiskey festival true yeah uh, true and also the fife festival earlier this year so they have aspiration they, they, they are trying to get their liquid out there. They're trying to be known. I feel uh, uh, it's going to be tough for them because they've got this price discussion at every table. Every time somebody tries a liquid, they've got to try and get across. Not only is this natively domestically expensive whiskey, yeah. but as soon as we export it to the Northern Hemisphere or anywhere else in the world, it becomes even more expensive. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they've got, they've got that. The people, the early adopters, the early investors, hopefully they'll be looked after. And, you know, as the availability catches up, they won't be tempted to push the prices ahead, you know, that, 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 you know, the prices will be maintained or reduced somewhat as the, as more liquid comes on stream. Um, yeah. Said the optimist. <laughs> yeah. I can see um, M.M. Carsten uh, in Germany said, yeah, they can get Pocono there right now. It looks like. Um, Excellent. Which is, yeah, really interesting. And... So now, um, now that we've been through all that, let's get to the heart of the discussion, the the core, <laughs> the dis, the distillation, the spirit run, the cut, yeah, and the uh, middle cut. <laughs> talk about the online Scotch whiskey awards. Every year, this is like, um, there's a few things I look forward to in a year, like you know, at the moment there's the Rugby World Cup. But look, if I'm being truly honest, I'm probably looking forward more to the online Scotch whiskey awards than. Than the Rugby World Cup, especially after All Blacks lost to the wow. French the other day. Wow, <laughs> wow. But huge exciting. pressure, right? Yeah. So, so tell us a little bit. I guess big picture. Um, some of you probably heard bits and pieces. I've linked. I've pinned a link there on my Scotch Whiskey Awards, and um, so you guys can go check that out. But um, big picture. First of all, what is it, and why? What why does it exist? <laughs> So it exists, it's born of a love of whiskey. That's yeah. probably, uh, you know, anyone that doesn't enjoy the sound of my voice, <laughs> they, they, this is, it's very easy for me to kind of soapbox a little bit. So by all means, rein me in, I feel if, if I start to waffle on a little bit, but the, it's born of whiskey. Mm -hmm. That's probably the easiest way to say it, a love of whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, it, it simply, it came about because of, to and fro's between Ralphie and I uh, talking about things and we Ralphie and I are not the same person he's often said this on his channel we're completely different yeah. we're doing different things we have different opinions about different things and 
And that doesn't matter. It actually adds to the value proposition, the fact that we don't agree on everything. However, our philosophies were similar and our frustrations were often born from the same things. And we talked about awards and tongue in cheek. And then one day I just got a message from Ralphie saying, Roy, what do you think about this? And he just kind of broad brushed a, an idea. I'd barely finished reading the message and I replied, let's do it. Yes, let's do it. I'm in. Um, and then realized <laughs> what I'd got myself into, you know, doing this thing and putting your head above the parapet there and taking it on and all the criticism that's inevitably going to come with that was really me stepping outside of my little warm and fuzzy aqua vitae zone. But I'm very, very glad that I did it. I looked elsewhere. I've looked in tech. I looked in cars. I looked in fishing gear. I, I was yeah. in the weeds. I was looking everywhere for another scheme that I could discover where, where the fan base, the community had got together a kind of grassroots way and come up with their own way to celebrate what was good. And I couldn't find it anywhere. I couldn't find it. I've since looked again, can't find it. So we had to start from scratch. We, we had to work out a way that this could represent what was being enjoyed, not what was selling, not what was popular, not what, not what was willing to invest or sponsor or advertise. We wanted to celebrate what people were genuinely enjoying and then let the chips fall where they may. So there's a couple of elements to it. Obviously, there's, there's the, co the core contributors, the contributors that all get together to refine the nominations. And then there's this kind of uh, public poll, this vote that it goes out for people, for, for them to decide who the winner is, go is going to be. It's not Roy's awards or Ralphie's awards. It's not Phil's. But I'm very glad that you're part of it. Uh, but it's it's uh, it's the community's awards, um, and specifically the Scotch whisky community. We didn't want to hog world whisky, so if you love Japanese whisky, if you love bourbon, if you love Tasmanian Australian, uh, whatever, however you want to categorise the whisky that you enjoy, you know you 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 can use your community to do a similar thing in the future if. if if you have the desire, you know, we're coming at this from the Scotch lover's perspective. That's where the S in Oswas comes from. It's the online Scotch Whiskey Awards. That doesn't mean that we only award or celebrate Scotch whiskey, but it is from the Scotch whiskey drinker's perspective. I mm. hope that makes sense to everyone. Yeah. So that's where, it, that's where it came about back in 2021. Um, I think we started talking about it in 2020, maybe. Um, but 2021 is when we kicked it off. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think you've been involved since the start, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think um, I've been involved since the start. And um, I remember when you first announced it, it just was like, that totally makes sense. Um, yeah. And look, there, there, I think there's lots of whiskey awards out there. There's a lot of bottles with stickers on them. And um, look, and I'm sure a lot of those people's palates who, who judge them and everything do think, uh, you know, they're good. And I, tr I trust a lot of those palettes, but it can get a lot of confusing with some of the whiskey awards. I'm not going to name any of them, but um, it, it can get a little bit confusing when you see they give out hundred, hundreds of rewards. And what I like about the, on on Scot the online Scotch whiskey awards, and I think um, someone just commented here, is that there's this, a consensus. Someone was saying, uh, uh, Hamo said, what the Oswas mean to me is that it provides a consensus. Um, and and it does. Yeah. It's from the people who are actually buying the whiskey. It's not just, you know, it's not just going to be some twenty three year old random bottle of, uh, you know, Brora or something that you, you most people won't get their hands on. And I'm sure the liquid would have been amazing for the judges. But um, and and it really showed after the first online Scotch whiskey awards when the winner of the best Scotch whiskey was an Aaron Ten, something yeah. that's incredible value great liquid and i'm sure like most people not not going to say like that's my favorite whiskey ever but that's not the point it's a whiskey that the vast majority of people can actually try and and you can have trust in it that that's going to be a good whiskey um because it's been submitted by a lot of people and that's what's really cool like to see a whiskey like that like rise through the ranks and it's not some rose bank or some kind of thing it's a it's an errand which you know, and even compared to other distilleries, like 
it hasn't even been around that long when you look at other like um older especially old scotch distilleries like you look at yeah. like verlon been around since 1816 or whatever um yeah and yeah so, and that's what I, I really like about it i do like that consensus and it really helps and and, it, and to have the audience in mind and the audience being the whiskey enthusiast the whiskey buyer um yes that's what it's so good for because it it helps those people it's not just a not an elitist thing it's something where any person who loves whiskey can look at you know which whiskies are people hunting out at the moment and which whiskies are available and they can go to the online scotch whiskey awards and it helps give them a guide in such a confusing landscape yeah i absolutely you've hit the nail on the head phil i mean i think the best whiskies i have behind me in this in this room here you know we're we're talking about uh, a 35 year old bro a 41 year old uh, north of scotland uh, you know all of these things what's the point beyond some kind of small value vicarious enjoyment for a viewer what's the point of us celebrating those whiskies unobtainium whiskies mm. mm. unicorns super expensive things rare whiskies there's plenty of that out there it's valid content it's valid to talk about these whiskies some people that's their vibe that's their lane the Only Scotch Whiskey Awards has to be an extension of our community that we, the, the space that we occupy. And that's speaking about contemporary whiskies, the things that are available today, the things that we can go out and enjoy and be a guide for people coming into whiskey, people that are already in whiskey but just need a wee bit of inspiration, whatever it may be, um, and say, these people are doing well. You know, th these are, these are whiskies that are loved. And yeah. you, you could argue, I mean, there are flaws to the, the Oswiz model. There are definitely flaws. But every time somebody points out a flaw, there's a good chance we already know. Um, but there's they point it out without any kind of, here's a better way to do it. So, you know, it, it is that there is a kind of, we at some point we have to do our thing as commentators, reviewers, creators. We've taken our place to say we recommend these as the nominations. But at that point, we hand it over to the community and say, now it's up to you, yeah. Um, which and, means that it, it tends to be a populist thing, maybe. But what's really interesting is that the community that are invested in the Oswas and getting involved are also invested in whiskey. Mm. They are putting forward meaningful votes. They are only voting on things that they would recommend to a friend or yeah. by themselves. Yeah, and that's where we we go to great lengths to try and ensure that that's what's happening. So you end up. Can I, I'll make a confession. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. The winner, the, the ceremony at the end, the winners, yeah, is a great thing. And that's going to be the busy show always. Mm. And you get the chance to share what the people's choice is. So completely uh, divorced from the awards themselves and what we nominate as creators or commentators, reviewers, it's all about just measuring what the people are enjoying. And that's great fun. Mm. But for me, the real excitement is in the nomination show which happens in a couple of weeks time it's a week to uh, my goodness it's a week tomorrow i think yes oh yeah it's <laughs> so close <laughs> so a week tomorrow we announce that ralphie and i on the 23rd of september from this very room ralphie and i will nominate what uh the nominations are Tune for in, folks. yeah that's that's the exciting show because that is not just celebrating one whiskey in each category the winner that's celebrating six offerings for every category it's almost like a who's who of what's happening in whiskey in 2023 mm. now again it's not roy's list it's not ralphie's list it's not phil's list it's this is a list of we've extended it to there's going to be more than 60 people involved in putting these nominations together this year yeah and the core contributor list the ones that proffer the original nominations in the first place before it goes out to refinement that's a bigger pool than we've ever used in the past as well. Mm. So we, you're involved in the process, right? Yeah, yeah. It would be interesting to get your take from an insider's perspective, uh, from a contributor's perspective, right? Is it easy to get involved? It's very easy, very easy. Yeah, yeah easy. The, the only I'm, hard I'm, thing is picking the whiskies, right? That's a hard bit, yeah. yeah. Um, that That's a hard bit, because I think that's probably why I was putting it off, because I was sort of like, 
oh, I just need to, what I need to do is sit in front of my whiskey collection and just have a think and, get, and go through them all and, and think about what I've bought in the last year, what, what have I been enjoying. Um, so that's probably the tricky part, but actually like submitting to it, the, easy. You can do it on the couch. You can do it in your bed. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. Um, I just saw Dave commented here, um, Dave Swift, he said, it also gives consumers a voice to reward those doing it right. And I think that's a big part of it too. It's, it, it gives a voice back to the consumer to give feedback, which then helps the distillery, which is really cool. I absolutely love it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, there was a comment here. Um, oh, I think it's jumped. Well, Amy Barrett, I've just responded to her. Um, this is something that I've proffered, the, the idea that uh, you know, one of our deepest and most meaningful contact points with whiskey is when we make the pilgrimage and visit the distillery. Mm. Um, and it's usually a wonderful experience, but occasionally some people can, a wee bit, can feel a wee bit left, let down. Um, and it's always surprising to me how little investment is put in that. You know, you've got this ability mm. to of kind of all of these people just turn up on your doorstep willingly, openly curious, right? And it, for you to just kind of put up together a wee scripted session, just usher them around, put them in the shop and then leave them is always wasteful. Um, yeah. I think there should be a, a lot more kind of investment in that experience to make it profound for them so that when they leave, you're turning away a potential ambassador for your products for the industry generally. Um, yeah. So Amy, Amy's again suggested that there should be an experience award for distillery tours. Oh, that's um, actually a fascinating suggestion. Yeah, true. Yeah, the reason that Ralphie um, and I have rejected it and many, many other categories is you've already drawn attention to it, Phil. You st as soon as we start to split the atom, <laughs> mm. you know, as soon as we start to get granular and, and offer things for what about this band of age statements? What about Speyside? What about regions? What about, you know, it's just too much. We need to kind of keep focus with nine categories on the award show, mostly yeah. down to me. We're already running for a three hour presentation. So, uh, but it's not just about time. Um, Imagine you went along to a live awards ceremony and a black tie event with a dinner and everything. You'd be talking about five, six hours or more there. Mm. It's not about that, but it is about trying to keep focus. And also the six nominees that get through for each category for it to be a real, real boost to them, for, to, for it to be a real value, mm. not an easy thing to achieve. Um, so we, we're, we're kind of careful. We have to be careful to uh, add without adding too many categories and just keep our focus but i think amy i think that's a very valid one and we've talked about it before so yeah. who knows who knows the first oz was in 2021 was our trial that was our kind of acid test the yeah. second one was kind of refinement fixing a couple of things mm. that we felt could go better this one is going to be hopefully a bit of a copy and paste from 2022 to yeah. just kind of set the rhythm to start grinding it out and start to earn a pedigree the Oswes are going to need a few years to really catch, I think, for people to understand the model and things. We, there's a lot of work involved and we just need to grind it out. So the yeah. more consistent we can keep it for now, I think the stronger a proposition it is. Yeah, and I think last year went really well. Um, and I think a couple of tweaks I totally agreed with. I think um, it went from best entry uh, whiskey to best value and a value I think is a really good um really good word yeah. because you're saying that it's a good price um but it's good whiskey too it's got both things so it's not just like cheap liquid on the bottom shelf that you know it's it the liquid's got to be good too and I think that really encompasses uh that's the right. best value that thing and that's probably the one I I'm most excited about is the best value whiskey because I think it's yeah. the one most people can get their hands on there's also the best scotch whiskey overall but that best value like um category uh, i'm always keen to see what what that is because i think that's the one that everyone after the scotch whiskey awards will want to go out and find or check if it's on the shelf or see if their friends have got a bottle or something um if they yeah, haven't tried it that's right that's right and i think that um value as you said does not mean cheap uh, it means you know we can we can spend 50 pounds and get great value for a 50 pounds we can spend 150 pounds mm. 
and get still get great value, just yeah. like a, a, a whiskey that will really, really silence you. And and then you decide that, okay, you're going to be much more careful. It's too expensive to replace easily, but you're still getting great value out of it. Yeah. And you're exactly. probably going to defend it to your friends and say, no, this is £150 worth of whiskey. Yeah. Um, so the value thing was left to be a wee bit more subjective um, wherever people find value in a product rather than entry level or gateway whiskies or whatever. We didn't want to focus on bottom shelf, as you say. We wanted to focus on people that were bringing good bang for buck whiskey experiences. Mm. Uh, hopefully that refinement worked a wee bit last year and we get a chance to kind of reinforce it this year. Yeah. We're halfway through the, the process in the background. So yeah. we, we, I don't know what the nominations are yet. The votes are rolling in now live. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're approaching about two thirds of the votes have been returned. Yeah. Uh, anybody can go in and edit and change their mind. Uh, I'm talking about, it's not a public vote right now. This is the, this is all the kind of creators. There's all, all the people that are involved in refining these nominations that Ralph and I will share. Um, that's happening in the background now. Uh, I hope this year we're going to see a few new entrants, a few new faces, a few new yeah, me too. A, a new picks that's going to freshen things up. But I yeah. also hope that we're going to see some consistency and consensus, yeah. some reinforcement um, of things that are not just a kind of bright flash, you know, a sudden, because that suggests hype. Right, that suggests that everybody's getting together and talking about Speyburn 15, how amazing this is, and then it disappears and people forget about it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you see Speyburn 15 appear, and, and I don't I don't know, I'm, <laughs> please do not consider that I think that Speyburn 15 is going to be part of the, the Oswiz at all. I'm just using that as an example. Because you, the bottle. Yeah. you have to be really careful with your language with during the Oswiz, right? <laughs> <laughs> but imagine yeah. if Speyburn 15 popped up time yeah. and time and time again. Mm. Eventually, people would get the message I bet you that's a good product, <laughs> yeah. right? So I'm looking for a mix. So I hope there will be repetition, some consistency there, some continuity is probably the best word. But I'm also hoping that we get some inspiration coming through and some new entries into the mix as well. But the truth is, Phil, and you know this as well as I do, they just let the chips fall where they may, right? Mm. So when, when is, um, so from next week onwards is when the community jumps in? Right after that's right. Um, that's right. It's exciting so, times. So just to re-emphasize that for everyone, uh, from when will that be? Next Friday. From next, next Saturday, Friday. the the twenty third, Ralphie and I get together. Yeah. And we announce the nominations for each category. And then uh, when the nominations the are announced, there'll be a web page on the Oscars where people can then vote on which whiskies they've enjoyed the most, which whiskies they exactly. like, which ones they want to pick exactly. out of so, those nominations. So make sure all of you watching that, yeah, next week, watch out for the announcements for the um, nominations for Online Scotch Whiskey Awards. And that's where you come in. Like, it's not just about uh, myself. It's not about Roy. It's not just about Ralph. It's about you as a whiskey drinker, a whiskey geek, those people who will sit down and listen to an hour long live stream of Roy and I talking about whiskey. It's you guys. You are the um, ones that can play a part in which which whiskey, you know, comes forward and which whiskeys do well. So make sure all you guys watching, you guys do jump in, get involved. Um, this is one of the only awards, as Roy said, in the world where you actually play a part in it. It's not just some judge who, like, you know, feels distant and far away, like, you are one of the judges in a way. You you play a part to it. Um, exactly, exactly. And I think that um, you know that there's a there's a real feel. People that invest and take the, the action to go ahead and vote, the feedback that I get is that they have felt a part of something, like they've affected something. Mm. Um, so you, so what you get to do is when you go through that process, and we do get flack by people saying. Are you kidding, Roy? I need a Google account to get involved. Sorry, you need a Google account. You'll understand why, Phil. We need a way that's fairly inexpensive. It doesn't cost us too much because it's fully funded by Ralphie and I right now. Yeah. So we cannot pay for these platforms to manage these huge, large scale, thousands of vote type things. Google works perfectly for that. Yeah. With a Google account, that means that 
producer X can't get their entire team to just sit for a day and vote multiple times on their own products. Yeah. They can get their entire team to vote once and we spot when that's happening. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. invalidate the votes. Sure. Everybody's allowed to vote, but yeah. each each individual account is limited to one vote only. So it makes it really quite robust. So it does need a Google account. But what you, when you when you log in, it should take you minutes. I'm right. You're involved already, Phil. Right? It's just minutes. a few minutes. Exactly. You go through. You vote for the nominations. If you cannot make a meaningful vote because you haven't tried, you're not familiar with the whiskey, you don't yeah. have much experience of it, so you can't say yes that I would recommend this to a friend or I would purchase it myself. Yeah. You can skip. Yeah. And go to the people's choice. I skip some. Yeah, you skip where you cannot add a meaningful vote. Don't just vote for things that you've heard are good. It's not what it's about. It's about you voting for what you believe in. And then it when you can also add your own and free text box underneath each category. That's how we build the people's choice. Mm. So you can literally say to us, hey, you know, this, my favorite whiskey isn't there. And I think it's brilliant. It should be talked about. And you put it in that box. And I guarantee you, if you're correct, there's going to be hundreds of other people potentially putting in the exact same people's choice. And it gets talked about. We clean that data. We yep. count that data. And we present it uh, as the people's choice. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, for those people who who don't who are coming in fresh, don't know anything about the online Scotch Whiskey Awards, go to Roy's channel, uh, click on live, and you will be able to find last year's um, last year's awards, and that will really show you just how it went last year. And yeah, so there's just two things: there's all the nominations, but then there's the People's Choice Award, where um, yeah, so that's really important. Write down which whiskeys stand out for you in the People's Choice as well. Um, and um, the other thing I just want to say as well. Um, this whole live stream uh, wasn't like Roy came to me and was like, I want to do a live stream about the online Scotch Whiskey Awards. It was actually like, I really believe in online Scotch Whiskey Awards. It was me going to Roy saying, hey, do you want to talk about the online Scotch Whiskey Awards? So this isn't like some sort of promotion thing. This is me just passionate about it and wanting to talk about it because I'm excited about it. Um, just so Thank you. Know. You're right. You're spot on. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I hope that all the channels, all the writers – all the pubs that are involved, all the retailers that are involved, uh, you know, bloggers and podcasters and whoever they are, I hope they all kind of mention this to their audience. Hopefully they're participating because they believe in it as a concept and they all kind of advertise it and talk about it because you're right, there's huge amounts of overlap. And when mm. everybody's talking about the Oz, it becomes a bit, a bit of noise, right? But also that's the only way that we can get people to understand this is not some kind of cynical, contrived stunt. This is a grass, grassroots thing. And only by getting behind it, getting our hands dirty with it, getting involved in it, can we understand fully that that's what it is. Mm. Hey, there's no way for anybody to pay for anything. Phil cannot pay right now. He can't even make a donation to the Ausbuzz. No. no producer can give a, a bottle, and who, who would a producer give a bottle to anyway? Me or Ralphie? That, that's not going to yeah. happen for our yeah, own true. content, let alone the Oz was. Yeah. So they go to Phil and they say, hey, Phil, here's a bottle. And then Phil, even if you're corrupt, which I know for a fact you're not, my friend, but you put forward that into the, the process, what's the chances of that bottle getting through? Yeah, up Very against thousands. Thin. Yeah. There would have to be a campaign for that producer to go to find who the core contributors are in the first place, which is not announced we don't tell anybody who they are yeah and then for them to go to multiple core contributors and then the campaign's exposed immediately and people work it out yeah so it's it's kind of pretty robust from that perspective but i think yeah. only through time and only through people getting involved it will they understand that that's part of it yeah it's very well thought out it's it, it's it's great I, lo I love that you've gone even through the years now it's just became more and more refined those like those little dints in the road all being covered in and yeah it's it's becoming like a really well um a, a really well running machine now it's it's fantastic and it's so good because it's all about us as the consumer of whiskey um so is there any um just i, I guess not about the online scotch whiskey awards at, at all but is, is there any like in whiskeys on your radar at the moment anything just anything you're enjoying at the moment that yeah, I mean that, and I think that's the difficulty during this period. Yeah. Um, 
it's okay just now because there's nothing out there in the public domain. But anything that I talk about, true, um, true. You know, there's nothing. There's no desire in me to promote something in order for it to get traction in the Oswiz. Yeah, I just want to see what's happening. I want to see which whiskeys yeah, win, and I'm just going to keep doing me through the Aquavite channel. I'm going to promote the things that I'm enjoying. Yeah, celebrate them, talk about them, yeah. and and then be. Cr- you know, offer some critique and things that I'm enjoying a wee bit less, or what, wherever it's valid. Yeah. But what you what you don't want to do is is have people looking at what you're saying, looking at your messaging and your language, and saying, "Ah, he's 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 doing that because of the Oz was." So you just you kind of want to take that discussion off the table altogether. Yeah, true, true. So uh, we've just had a session this week. Uh, um, it's interesting what you say about it being a well-oiled machine. If you saw behind the scenes, <laughs> right. you would, real, would realise it's just me and it's just me and Ralphie, and we're grabbing yeah, people true. to help right and left, and we're saying, "Can you help here?" Yeah, but I've, I've, there's two guys getting involved uh, to take care of uh, the socials um, and the communications and things this year. Uh, great guys who I'm familiar with. Um, they're, they're just helping spread the word on the, the socials and things like that. And they came to me with this amazing expose proposal of all the things that they wanted to do to promote the Oswiz this year. Oh yeah. And they were they were crestfallen when I said, Stop. Yeah. We cannot say any of these things. We yeah. cannot even say, Will Redbreast manage another duo this year? Will they ma- manage to pull off another because that is us then leading. True, leading leading um our yeah. audiences we- to in a way all we can do is find ways to promote the Oswiz as a concept yeah. and ask for participation and investment from the community we cannot sure when the nominations are out there we can share what the nominations are and things like that but it's got to be evenly spread we've got to celebrate all the nominations in an equal way yeah. um, and you know it's just it's really frustrating because nobody's trying to do anything in a biased way, <laughs> but you just can't even invite that kind of critique. No, that's so you true. have to be very considered. Uh, the guys immediately went, okay, we get it. And they came back with some cracking imagery, a nice fresh feel. So over the course of, I think today that campaign starts, the guys are starting to share uh, on socials today. And that'll be our nine categories that lead up to the nomination show. Once the nominations are exposed and everyone knows, then the social media will go nuts and start to share with everybody. So if you're on socials, please share and repeat. Let's get the word out there for the Oswiz. I would love to see it build um, and become more and more meaningful year after year. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited about that too. I think um, to see the Oswiz grow and to become something that even people outside our own communities will then um start talking about or even ones where distilleries it was really cool a really cool thing happened um if people didn't watch last year's award where um like i think one distillery came onto the show and another distillery even made an announcement how they were going to make everything unchill filtered natural color and that sort of thing so it's really cool to see distilleries and then other distilleries are now hanging up the awards in the distillery so like it's cool to see it the it's becoming concrete that it's becoming actually something that even distilleries can be proud of uh, winning which is really cool to see um and yeah that's where i hope it goes and that it, it becomes a thing then then other distilleries go well, okay well what are these distilleries doing that you know we're not how can we um be reach Engage, those whiskey yeah. geeks reach those whiskey enthusiasts and to almost be an encouragement to you know, well, we, what we're essentially we do. doing for them, Phil, is giving them free exposure. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's true. free marketing, right? Yeah, and it is. It's, um, it's, it costs them nothing. So, you know, save a bit of money on here, there, and everywhere. Um, and, uh, you know, there's G Whiskey in as well, another great example, Jeff over in Taiwan. Oh, I saw right? that. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic content, fantastic critique coming out from him. Yeah. Um, and he's part of the Oswiz. I'm glad to have you, buddy. I'm glad to see you in here too. But but you you know just seeing that 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 if you focus on making the best liquid, you're going to find that you the promotional budgets can be a wee bit less. Now, okay, there's lots of m- machines that are just running, and it's difficult to change. Uh, you know, there's departments put in place and agencies contracted and all of that stuff. I'm mm-hmm. not suggesting that that's all thrown out, but you might find that it's a lot easier when the products are integrity forward and you go for quality and flavor. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very, again, it's very difficult to talk about that, but it's, 
wonderfully reassuring, as you say, to walk into Springbank when I was down in Campbelltown a couple of weeks ago, mm. see their awards hung on the wall in the washback bar, mm. to go up the road to Glen Scotia. And on the Glen Scotia shelf in their shop, right next to Victoriana, in a frame, they've got the Oswest certificate right next to the product. Yeah. And I asked great. both distilleries, in fact, I asked Springbank Live on the when I did the live stream from Springbank a couple of weeks ago, I asked them outright, does, does this matter to you? Is this a nice thing for you? And the, the, the answer from them is very telling. We did not act. We did not take an action to get this. We didn't submit product. We mm. didn't send off samples. We didn't buy seats at a dinner. We didn't send things for blind tasting or for, for, for it to be awarded a points or anything. This happened from the community. This happened from the people who drink our product. Yeah. And it is so important to them. It's the yeah. best measure of feedback. And you're right, you see Springbank coming on and celebrating. The whole team's there just kind of raising glasses and so happy. Mm. The people are working, at, I think two years in a row now, we've had the Adelphi CEO of Adelphi coming on. Yeah. Uh, we had Andre from Signature Vintage coming on and saying, you know what, we're just not going to chill filter anything anymore and we're not going to add colour either. Um, and and just to, keep, to kind of hear those announcements and to for people to pick up on the feedback and get the zeitgeist mm. of tasting quality over drinking quantity, how that that is changing, um, is means that it's when you're sitting there at two o'clock in the morning, you know, <laughs> cleansing data <laughs> for the yeah. Oswest, it makes it absolutely worthwhile. Mm. So, yeah. So yeah. Oh, it's really good. Now I appreciate everything you do for it. Um, is it, uh, tell us, is there a moment, um, do you have a moment in your whiskey kind of journey that, um, that stands out to you even outside the Oswiz? Like, I, I wonder we'll just, we'll finish on, um, maybe a little story or a little, if you have any like moments with the whiskey that kind of have really, when you look back on your whiskey journey, um, something that was a little bit magical, a little bit interesting. Is there anything like that? Um, you, you're speaking about epiphanies with whiskey. Yeah, an epiphany. Yeah, I was thinking just to wrap things up. Uh, we'll finish on a a little, a, maybe something, a little epiphany from you, so people can see um, a bit from you, learn a bit about you. So, people that watch my content will have heard this story. Uh, people all have heard me the Luca story, how I found whiskey and how fit why whiskey found me, perhaps. Um, all of these things, but I'm going to share a story about my brother and I, um, because the reason I'm sitting in front of you today is because of this moment, this very moment. I was drinking whiskey for a number of years. I was enjoying it, and I was building a collection at home, and I was sharing it and exploring whiskey, but I wasn't really reading. I certainly wasn't online. I wasn't kind of geeking out about whiskey. I was just appreciating it which is still the vast majority of the whiskey drinking community, let's be honest, Phil, right? That's exactly how they're doing it. Mm. Uh, and then our, my brother's family and my family went for a wee holiday up to the west coast of Scotland in 2009, this would have been. Uh, and we took, I had, I had twin girls, they were babies at the time, <laughs> very young, and I, we, we took them in the twin buggy for a walk just to get them to sleep. It was the middle of the day, they needed their nap. Yeah. And the girls stayed at the, at the down in the, next to the water, and we went into the town for a walk. And our wives knew that that meant we would be walking past a whiskey shop. <laughs> so as we walked away, my wife joked that she had my wallet, and therefore I didn't have the ability to buy whiskey. And she was absolutely right, she was carrying <laughs> it. So we walked away and we couldn't buy whiskey. However, when we got past the whiskey shop, in the bottom of the buggy, there was change. We knew it was there because we could hear it. My brother and I scooped out about, I think it was about 14 or 15 pounds worth of change. And we said, right, we'll buy a glass as a souvenir. And we went into Lock, Lock Fine Whiskies in Inverary mm. to buy two Glencairn glasses. But there was a bottle of Lagavulin in there. Let me, yeah. let me run away. Yeah, yeah. Here it is. It's empty now. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, this, that's the bottle. That's the bottle, right? Wow. Um, yeah, so it was sitting on the shelf 
and it was 12, I wish the price tag was still on this, £12.75 or something like that for this 20 seal bottle. And there was enough money in the change for my brother and I to buy this. Yeah. And we bought it, we put it in the bottom of the buggy and we went back. We went back to the house that night, we tried it, loved it, went fishing the next day, took it with us, tried it, loved it again. I was not into Isla whiskey, PT whiskies at the time. And I took it home after the holiday and my brother and I, you know, we'd, we'd made a meal where the fish we'd caught. <laughs> it's another story. And then afterwards I'd cleaned the kitchen and I sat down with a tiny pour of this Lagavulin and it might have been close to the bottom at this time. And I can still taste that sip to this mm. day. Yeah. I still taste it. It was visceral. It was, all the lights came on. It was like just, it was like, oh my goodness, this is, this is incredible. And I just sat there for the longest time staring into the glass thinking, I need to learn more about this. Mm. Why is this happening? Yeah. Why is this this thing? It was Lagavulin in 16. And, and that, it, it just became a runaway train from then. So I started to learn a lot on my own. Mm. Three or four years later, I got together with, with my buddy that lives close to me, the Whiskey Rev, um, a genuine minister. There's no reason for us to be friends other than whiskey. It's crazy. It's, um, and it was an arms race at that point. We're buying different bottles every week. Oh, yeah. and the collection just explodes. Yeah. And then, you know, my wife and him start to encourage the, this evangelism thing that I do around the dining room table. Yeah maybe find an outlet for it online. <laughs> so there you go. Sorry, I, again, if you ask me something, it's going to be a long-winded response, Phil. You That's know the drill, right? No, I really enjoyed that. Thank you so much for saying that. Um, I remember I had a similar thing um, when I lived in London after I'd just got into whiskey. Um, as I said um, earlier in the stream, I, I had a flatmate who was also into whiskey. We we're, were both sort of getting into it, and just the excitement of a Friday night would roll around and to both share a dram with each other. And we, we both had bought different bottles and to share it. And I remember once ringing my brother on, um, on FaceTime or whatever. And, and like, you know, he's asking about my job and stuff and was talking and stuff. And he's like, Phil, you just keep talking about whiskey all the time. And I was like, oh, do I? <laughs> <laughs> so I must have keep bringing it up in the conversation and, you know, I wasn't even talking about my job. I wasn't talking about, like, I don't know, my travels. Somehow, I was telling my brother, who doesn't even drink whiskey, somehow I keep talking to him about whiskey. It was probably very annoying for him, but it's, it's probably a similar thing. Like, um, yeah, that I, I just it's, wanted it's, to it's, know more. I wanted to share more. Um, it's an interesting yeah. thing, and I think we need to we need to check ourselves a bit, right? Because. In non-whiskey company, we, we potentially become, I know for a fact I do, become a whiskey bore. <laughs> um, and I, but it's, it's probably born of a desire to bully other people. You want your brother to love whiskey too, so you can share it with him. Yeah, yeah. Because of how profound an experience it actually is. It's not yeah. just like having a nice day fishing together, right? Yeah. It's visceral. It's, mm. it's commanding all of your primary senses, as I say, at the same it time. And it, and it really it means that you you're just appreciating life yeah um, and to be able to do that with someone else uh, someone else that you love someone else that you enjoy spending time with yeah it just amplifies everything um yeah. and that's it's, exactly it's, it yeah. yeah but that's what makes us a whiskey board we are probably yeah. a whiskey board <laughs> and i always find in an age where everything is instant where we message i can message you on whatsapp right now and you receive it but then you get something like you know, an Anok 18, like this took a very long, eight, what was I doing 18 years ago? And this is what I yes. love about whiskey. It's, it's something slow among everything that's fast. Everything's fastest these days. And there's this drink, which is incredibly slow to make. Um, you look at all these new distilleries now, it takes years to get a, like a bottling that the distillery's even happy with, with, you know, like a standard bottling that they're happy with. Um, it, you know, it takes which, is, which is why it's it's incumbent upon us as the consumer then to slow down with it and appreciate all of that. Yeah, Jimmy Jazz is saying never a quick story from you, Aquavite, but it's so cool that you have that bottle, right? He knows, you know, he knows that I tend to why why, why use a sentence when a paragraph is available, right? It's just, <laughs> but whiskey kind of teaches us to be contemplative, to slow down. And to take a bit of time and mm. uh, yeah, kick the backside out of that, of course. Yeah. But I think you're right. I think to sit with that glass and think, what was I doing 18 years ago? Yeah. It's 
it's just another kind of lovely treat that whiskey affords us. That's so good. Hey, thank you so much, Roy, for coming onto the stream. Really appreciate it. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic. We're really excited about the Oswiz. Um, I hope everyone gets involved next week. Make sure you go watch his stream. Make sure you check out his channel. Um, and yeah, make sure you go and vote. It's an exciting time of the year every year now. And um, I hope everyone who's been watching along, everyone who's been watching on the replay, um, do go and check out the Oswiz. Do get involved. Make sure you check out Roy's channel. If you're interested in this kind of, um, these interesting discussions, these long form discussions, make sure you join the VPUB, uh, which is on Thursday nights, UK time, or if you like me in New Zealand, Friday mornings. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining us, Roy. Phil, thank you so much for giving me the ability to come on and soapbox a wee bit and hopefully I've not sent everybody to sleep and especially for people like Jimmy Jazz it's crazy that he's even even in it must be like 5 a.m for him but <laughs> I appreciate it and it's great to see not only a lot of familiar faces to me but a lot of folk that I maybe I maybe don't recognize too so that's mm. just a pleasure Phil I'm so grateful that you reached out to me thank you for that and for everything that you do as well buddy cheers thank you so much all right cool have a good one have a good day see cheers cheers So yeah, thanks everyone for joining today's stream. Absolutely great to have Roy on. Um, just even those conversations there, you can see the magic of what it is to be part of one of his V-pubs. So I hope a lot of you who are new to my channel, who are new whiskey drinkers, you can kind of see what's so special about what Roy does for the whiskey industry, for whiskey geeks, for whiskey enthusiasts, and just whiskey in general. So make sure you guys, again, Get involved in the online Scotch Whiskey Awards. Thanks to all you guys in the chat. Um, it's been real good. Sorry I haven't been able to get to all your comments again. Um, but it's so good to see you guys all discussing with each other, talking to each other. Um, and also as well, um, uh, my live streams are made possible by my patrons. Um, if you're interested in supporting uh, my channel, what I do, my deep dive videos and that sort of thing, that's the best way to support me. So um, do do that. Um, but look, if you... Things are tight for many people around the world at the moment. And if you just want to meet other whiskey geeks, also jump over to my Discord as well, and which you can find all those links in the description. But thanks again, everyone. It's been great to actually... Thanks again to all you New Zealanders who came in and could actually share a dram. And we can all share a dram together. So hopefully we can do many more of these. And um, appreciate you all. And we'll... Yeah. See you later. Cheers. Beauty. Share and enjoy.